please. Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, we can't we can't expose that one. That one's well, definitely a forbidden. Well, so I mean, I guess uh, be, being this week, uh, the, the biggest, I guess, two topics that will affect Appalachians uh, <clears throat> the most. I guess this week for next week's big thing to come was, I guess. I don't know what's more important to this show that that Simon's homeland is about to go into a civil war, or the vice presidential pick for Kamala Harris. But I guess we'll, well that's a couple. Let's start with London. Why not? Let's yeah. start. Let's start London with the geezers. Has, London has fallen. Well, I don't think it has. I, I saw an article to get today. I was just trying um, to recommend a movie. I'm sorry. Well, well I, yeah, yeah. But were you going to get <laughs> paid for it? Gerard Butler. What, wasn't that the movie yeah. he did? Mm-hmm. Was it? Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. What concerns me is that the mainstream media, corporate media, a bunch of lying bastards that they are, are framing this as a right wing, mm-hmm. you know, attack on the immigrants. It's racially motivated. And I'm saying absolutely not. And they're saying far right, I think. They, oh, they're saying far right. Far right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So <laughs> that, that, right. Na- that narrative has to be dispelled. I'm, I'm saying the English people are have reached their limit they are fed up they're done playing the game and they are highly motivated to say we are not going to put up with a massive flood of muslim immigrants taking over our whole culture and fuck them and i fully support what i don't support the violence behind it but i fully support the mindset behind standing up for your culture and 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 i am i will i'm not going to apologize for that is the problem years of immigration policy or lack of thereof is that- well the, the if if we want to really go back to it i would say the responsibility of this particular phase of immigration falls on tony blair if i was to go back further into the 60s and 70s I could recount a certain politician from the UK, a very famous politician who's been accused of complete racial hatred and and, and all that nastiness, was a chap called Enoch Powell. And he said that, you know, the immigration policies that if, if are unchecked will basically lead to rivers of blood. And that was back in the 60s and 70s. And, and you know, by all means, fact check it. He was considered an absolute racist and a bigot, but it isn't the reality of what we're seeing now playing out. He was dead on the money, wasn't he? And he was 100% on the money. And well, but, it, it, but if I say that, now I'm the bigot. No, you're not a bigot. And I mean, if any rational, sane person games these scenarios out, when, when you have a class of cultures like that that are so extreme well, we, and, it, and can't, they can coexist together, but what is always going to be done by the elites is the is the pairing of those two things against each other. And then, what, I mean, what they've done over the past, you know, 40, 50 years, but specifically the past 10 to 12, yeah. is they have just opened the floodgates. And this is part of... And the, now we've got Khan. This is part of the takeover you know, a, of the A, a Muslim radical. Yeah. Being the mayor of London, but they worked you there. But is, isn't that how you know we've got certain Congress women? Well, yeah, that that you know are now in power because of putting certain immigrant populations overwhelming the indigenous population. Yeah, and when I say indigenous, that includes every black person, every white person, every person that was born here. Yeah as an indigenous person yeah. has now been, you know, basically kicked out of the political process because you've now been overwhelmed by a massive Muslim immigration policy well, that's dumped them in a very specific area. I mean, very specifically. Behind, we... we are very close behind what is happening in London now. Yeah. We're almost there. And I think we'll be there sooner because the American spirit is more free than I, I what believe the so. British spirit is because look, we, we if, we're scared of law. If if, if, if it is, if, it's absolutely right. Why did I move here? In my, for in my, my political in my, in and, my opinion, and religious freedom. This is a last gasp effort on the side of traditional England 
to save what it has. Yeah, I think honestly, I think it's too late. Like these well, sorts of because they I are, think so too because it is just well, it's been such a long time yes. coming. Like it wasn't, and, and I may be wrong, but wasn't this the subject of Solomon Rushdie's book? I mean, wasn't it sort of along these same lines Very much of so, immigration yes. and and being very a much problem? So. And, so. and I think I think the the immigration policies of the UK over the last several decades has actually been very responsible. You know, we, we've taken on board a fantastic immigrant population from the Commonwealth. And, and I, don't, I don't think anyone would say that that has been to the detriment of the English culture. But what we're seeing now yeah. is an invasion. And, and are we not seeing it here? I mean, oh, th- this is... This is this is big shit right the, hap- it's the, happening right now with the vastness of the United States and just the sheer population compared to England we you don't see it as much yet here like it's not as visible in your face I guess maybe it is in some of the cities I just don't go to those places so but well, well why would you but like London for example I mean it I, has to be mostly. I, I was I, I, well. I, I was mean, I was I was there. I worked in Piccadilly and St James's and and, and where <laughs> you worked where Piccadilly and St James's. <laughs> what the hell is Piccadilly? <laughs> oh, for goodness! Piccadilly Square, man. Sorry, Piccadilly Square, old chap. Come on, carry on as you were. <laughs> so it was like a Beatles it, song. It, well, it's an air. It's it's a very affluent area of 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 London. You know, we had Chinatown, we had fantastic Indian populations, the Jamaican population in Notting Hill and and and, and Brixton. You know, we embraced that, and it was great. And, it, and it works. It works really, really well. It's the same as our cities here. You used to have Little Italy, yeah, Chinatown, yeah, but our but neighborhoods, but, Italian yeah, neighborhoods. But it's part of part of. E. Michael Jones writes a lot about this. The driving of the ethnic neighborhoods out into the suburbs and then bringing in well that you know, that they the develop the, that that, that ghetto just, element well, I, yeah. I understand they, that. it's a slightly different england but what they've done is they've just over flooded it and got rid of those individual cultures and driven in this i i, I still think some of the suburbs of london are very true to to, 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 to where they're at you know okay. I think the influx of of Muslim refugees and North African refugees has toppled the balance, and and that cultural balance has given a, a political imbalance, and, and and it is not good for the indigenous people. Now, whether I am white, black, yellow, who gives a damn? I'm indigenous, yeah. right? So let's not take that away from where we are in America. We are indigenous people. We belong here. We've we've earned the right, and and now you've got a corruption of culture that is is going to be so problematic in a small country. Think how slow a bleed that's going to be in a in 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 a landmass as big as North America, yeah. where the the borders are porous, <laughs> and and we've we've put all these immigrants. Illegal immigrants. I'm going to call them illegal because that's, that's what they are. And let's not use let's not bullshit our way around that. And they are now corrupting. I think the indigenous people and their cultural. I, I you know, fucking wake up. But but it's so complex. Yes, it is. Because let's let's be honest. We have illegal immigrants that have been here for twenty years. That have been a contribute to society. Yep. Paid their taxes. They have paid taxes for 20 years. Got no issues. They will never, ever see a social security check. But they're still illegal immigrants to this day. We need to address that. But But that's another another issue. Like, because them people should be here. I mean, mean, these people speak English. You know, they they adopted the culture. Then we have the, the ones that I don't need a license in the construction industry. Can frame you a house, cut Dakota fifty percent, and get the job n- non traceable. You know, then you have the ones that literally just got here in the last few years that are from where? Like how did you? Like how did <laughs> All you? All over now. Def- 
like, how do you correct where we're at? Because there's a lot of them. I mean, I, I can think of several illegal immigrants, as we want to say, that I, I mean, I consider gross. Absolutely. I've known for 20 years. And the ones that are paying taxes, doesn't that sound like something Trump could come out with tomorrow? Like, hey, if you've paid taxes as an illegal immigrant for over 15 years, you're automatically granted citizenship. Well, at least a, right, a, a path to a path right. to citizenship. Well, if you can get like 10 people in your local community to come vouch for you, you know, 10 people that, you know, live there, been there, you know, something like that, like, like a voucher system, say, hey, look, you know, we want this person as a part of our community. He's been here for 15 years. You know, he, he's got a family here. He, he there's a process. Out. Because if there's somebody else who just pops up, like, we don't know this dude. He ain't been here. But there's, know, a, there's, a, there's a process, right? Now, the, proce the process is quite clear to me. I came in to this country as a legal alien. I was given a green card, right? That green card gave me the access to a social security number, driver's license, and all that good shit. The one thing that is conflicting with all of that, which goes down to my constitutional basis of argument, is that I was paying taxes without representation. Now, there was a big fucking war fought about that. Force. Right? Force. So when, when I have my green card, yes, I'm legally obliged and I am here and I'm abiding by the laws, but am I not the main, the, 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 the argument for taxation without representation? So you can have it one of two ways, right? So if, if, if illegal aliens or legal aliens are paying taxes under the environment that is, they, they are legally obliged to do, why don't they have a vested interest in their, their ability to vote? Now, that's a very conflicted point. Taxation sucks. So I, I kind of mute that argument already. And you think about the illegal aliens that have been paying child support ordered by our court system for the last 15 years. Are they not representative um, of the country? But of course they, they are. are still, at the end of the day, they are not, you know, they're, they're paying child support is forced by the court. Yeah. They're paying Social Security. But they're still, at the end of the day, I mean, they're, you know, why have we let this get well, to this point? We, 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 we have not embraced an element of immigration that needed to be legally observed yeah we have in race the well, government has it it's well it's a hard political issue because what you know yeah. what politicians going to come out and say i want to you know just you know you, because you out. can't swing around and say well here we go so we're 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 we're, we're, we're now going to have a, an immigration policy that goes against the constitutional law of the land it's a problem and and we have been cowards in facing it Right, we've been cowards in facing it. We need to we need to face the problem up front and be honest about it, because well, the the, the like people that pay honest. taxes here that have been immigrants here that and also, by the way, are a massive economic drain because they send a lot of their dollars south of the border. All right, so let let's think about that concept as well. We need to embrace that population. It's well, welcome them in, you know, I, I, but do it legally. And, and I, 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 that's what, you know, and you know who I'm talking about when I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely. Thing. I do. And I will. And I mean, I love this dude. He's like a bro. I mean, I mean, for Christ's sake, he swam the river at 13 years old. Work, mm. body shot, this, this. I mean, he's been, man, I've known this boy since, I mean, he's my age. And like, we're, 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 we're like brothers. Dude, he's for awesome. sure. And so I want to, you know, I mean, he knows English better than as good as we do. Mm -hmm. I want, I want, I'm an, I'm an American. So I find a lawyer in DC. He, I mean, he found a lawyer in DC, gave this lawyer $10,000 uh -oh. cash and chaffed him to, to, uh -oh. to help him get, and gave know, him nothing, nothing gone. Yep. You know, I, I'm scared to get pulled over, you know. And, dude, he's the man that is at every community benefit. I will help you if you're in need. He was up here putting batons on my barn in my time of need. Even deeper than that, I mean, an unbelievable contractor crashed. Mm -hmm. But he can't get a contractor's license. Yeah. So you got 
some dickhead mm -hmm. that he had, you know, he's getting his own work, mm -hmm. but he, had, you know, he's paying a guy that has a contractor's license so much money, you know, he's, he's his... running his own business, but ain't allowed to, mm -hmm. even though he's paid, you know, that is the kind of stuff that just hurts me. Mm -hmm. Because he's a Dakota, he's a me, you know, he's a us. He he's an entrepreneur, and he ain't allowed to shine because of, of you know now bureaucracy. And that's the people you want here. It that's is the people we want here. And that's why the left gets traction with this argument because there are problems with the immigration system. There are issues that need to get straightened out because you have people like that who don't get the reward that they deserve, and you know the the courts are backlogged for like years on this. I mean, these guys have court dates that's two to three years in the future. That makes absolutely no sense. You know, that that, that doesn't work. But, but it should, and also it's costing them thousands upon thousands of dollars to do it. And and that to me is, why would you do that? Why, why are you, you're not being a facilitator in helping our culture. But if, if all of these people for the last 25 years are paying social security tax every year and they're never going to get a dollar. Why maybe we, sh you know, why would you change it? Then, you know, I mean, like me and Dakota in the construction and, you know, there's a lot of these guys, man, they're, they're our brothers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and half, I mean, half of them scared to death, you know, sure. you know, we, and most of them, I mean, like they'll all tell you, man, America's, you know, they, they embrace that. They're salt of the earth guys. But all of them live under a fear that of the unknown. And that's down to you know, bureaucracy. That's bureaucracy. And, and next thing I know, be. Yeah, they're scared. It's all going to just go away. Mm -hmm. It's all just going to go away. Blink yeah. of an eye. Mm -hmm. Well, it's bureaucracy, but. It's, it's so sad. You know, it's so sad. Yeah, I mean, the, the laws have to be changed. Mm -hmm. The nah, the process. Common sense, for, man. Just well, the process right. for coming, for becoming a citizen has to become. The won't easier and more. Uh, well, they make things complicated. They make oh, mine was, things complicated. Mine was adoption. Nightmare. They'll sit yeah. there and tell you all day long. You know, people will scream left and right. Oh well, well, you know, there's nobody out there's adopting these kids and all these kids. That's because the adoption process is so ridiculous oh, and expensive yeah. and long. Yeah. And it's like you encourage these people to terminate their pregnancies yeah. because you make them think their kid won't have a life. And there are people lined up at the yin yang to want to adopt these children and be good parents. And the bureaucratic red tape nonsense and, and price tag on it is so absurd. You know what I mean? Like pe people expect and, and they assume the worst in everybody. They're like, Oh, well, how come churches aren't helping out more? How come these people, you know why? Because everybody that's a member of that church is hamstrung. 501c3. Every single tax they have to pay and they don't have the extra money to throw you away. You said it. You stop taxing everybody. 501c3. Guess what? If I didn't get taxed, you know, 35% or whatever it was, I would be giving much more money to my church and to charities that would turn around and take care of these people on a much more efficient basis we because can't, they would be under scrutiny. We can't afford to tithe. Yes. That's where we're at. Yes. Right. And that's the point. And then I can turn around and they have their talking point. They're like, oh, oh, well, churches don't, they know churches try. You know, churches try Spike Cohen, good friend of ours, you know. I went down after he came here last year for his first show. I went down to North Carolina a, a, a few months later, and they, they were helping out this homeless shelter. This this church and this pastor was letting homeless people on his land, and and the government was continuously trying to shut it down and move them out of there, not because they were doing anything wrong. It was because they were showing the up the town council where the town council and local governments were getting this X amount of dollars to take care of homelessness, and now they're showing they can do it without the money. So they have to get rid of it so they continue to get that money that they're actually not fixing homelessness with. So, you know, Spike is really big into that kind of stuff. You know, he's going around and and pointing at this kind of stuff that these churches are trying to help. And what happens? The government goes in and shuts them down. Oh, you don't have a permit to feed the homeless. I don't have a permit to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Are you out of your freaking minds? I mean, this is the stuff I bought from a store that your FDA said is perfectly fine, and I'm out here not charging anybody, so you can't get a cut, you greedy bastards. You can't get a cut. I'm just handing it to them. But no, I can't do that because I haven't paid you a fee to hand out food to poor people. These people are sick and demented and twisted. J&P Meat Processing, used to, people used to bring deer down there 
darn deer scent. They didn't, they killed the deer they didn't want. They brought down there. They processed it. Give that give them that they were giving it to so the local food banks. Yeah, the food, the food banks. banks. They, they, they shut it off. Yeah. They wasn't allowed to do that anymore. Why not? So, uh, in case one of the homeless got sick. Yeah, it wasn't steam. Yeah, because I mean, well, I heaven forbid, yeah. heaven forbid they go I in and buy it. an yeah. eight dollar pack of Boar's Head Deli meat and get whatever the hell they Wisteria. just got. Free yeah, Wisteria, you know what I mean? Like, like heaven yep. forbid they go do that as a homeless person. Yeah. I mean, what are we what are we it, talking it's about? It's safer here? for the hungry man on the street to go rummage through the trash can at the McDonald's and get some half eaten burgers and finish them off than it is to get a pound of venison from the food bank. Yeah. No, they ain't got a stamp on it. For real. I know. It's it's so stupid. (laughs) That's what we're living in. I remember that. In a lot of cities now and different states, it's illegal to give like leftovers to the homeless to do any of that. Hell, Florida. Florida just banned homelessness. It's now illegal to be homeless in Florida. Which now that's a problem within itself. itself, Because, I mean, on on one hand, look, (laughs) it's the same reason you don't feed the bears in national parks. Why? Because the bears keep coming back to that yeah. area, and eventually there's not going to be food there, but there will be a person, yeah. and that person is food. Yeah. Like, you don't feed cats because, you know, <laughs> outdoor cats will continue to come up on your porch. Like, th- there are reasons that these things happen. Like, I know you want to be compassionate, but you have to find that level yeah. b- between compassion and, and what's the word I'm looking for when you, uh, what, what my wife does to me and my alcoholism. Uh, she um <laughs> pacifies you. Pacif- yeah, you're pacifying him. Yeah, encourages. Yeah, she, she encourages uh, nice. you. You're, you're, uh, the Englishman in the room wins. It's enabling. It's enabling. You're it. enabling. Yeah. Him. Like, like you want to help out a dude, but <laughs> yeah. at some point in time, when you become when it gets to the point of enabling, like I mean, you showed up on my couch. I didn't run you off. I let you sleep there for like uh, a long while. But I wasn't homeless. I had a home. I had <laughs> places. Had I couch. Well, <laughs> no, I had multiple places. I could have. I could. I mean, I had a home. He was the I guy. Just, he was the guy on the couch. I'm half baked. <laughs> I really was. No, I was full baked. <laughs> Down by the river. <laughs> My well, roommate would take their motorcycles out and ride them up and down the streets while they were in the house sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, we, we weren't even house sleeping. I was back home. I was like, I'm going to get a ride back home and be safe tonight. Not ride my <laughs> motorcycle. Safe, be safe. On a motorcycle. <laughs> no, no, no. I left my motorcycle. I got to ride home with somebody else. Oh, my God. That's Smart move. They, that's when they decided to take them out for rides. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Crazy. We well, didn't wreck mean, those. That's living. There you that's go. <laughs> hey, when you, you become an adult, you make a decision. I'm going to live every day or I'm going to die one day at a time. Yeah. I'm yeah, living. but Amos did, you know, Amos did this 20 go. years yeah. later or earlier. And now, you know, we'll say sometime next week, you know, he's out of town or he's not in town. He's working, whatever the case may dumb. be. And he looks on his video cameras around off. his wood chopper, his dumb. house, and he sees me walking up in there. <laughs> he ain't going to call the cops. He ain't going to question. He's gonna be like, well, Billy's doing something up in there. I guess I'll find out about it later. You know what I mean? Like, no, because I'll go to Dakota's house. I'm like, hey, pull up your cameras from yesterday. I want to know who came up the driveway. It happens. he got good cameras. I do. <laughs> Paul, I get that. In I get that license plate. That is the uh, way to do it. The license that's, plate reads well. That's how that I see you before you see me. Everybody should do that. Uh-oh. That's the thing, though. You know, I did. I crashed on this couch, but now I can do something like that. So I don't know. It's just we we, we got to figure something out. You know, I'm just less community. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, everybody I mean, everybody's back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, figure out a way. I mean, like, I, I, and we, then, and then everybody figure out a way to promote. Everything that they're involved in, mm-hmm. yeah. Because keep the money, you know. Just keep keep the money tight. Keep the money tight. Supporting yeah. friends, yeah. Yeah, yeah but but the but multiple gets, the faster. But multiple tight circles will break off in that thing. So you know, like take this tight circle for instance. Now each and every one of us will go out. And we'll have four or five other people we know who will also keep other funds in tight circles with, and those people will do it. And that way, you're still keeping it within the system, but everybody can thrive. You know, I mean, we got to, I mean, just now is a better time than ever to, to make sure everybody out there, you're supporting people in your neighborhoods, people. Like I said it last week, we went to, we go to the farmer's market every Saturday in Rocky Mountain. I know Farham's got one, Union Hall's got one, I think Redwood's got one. Not not counting Melvin's Farm to Fork store. There's a store right there on Grassy Hill. They're exploding there everywhere. There's no reason every They're single one of them. exploding everywhere. Should not be selling out of food. The farmer's market should sell out every single Saturday. Like, get down there, like, like if you can go to 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 Walmart on a Tuesday night, you can go to the farmers market on a Saturday. Go in there, get real food, get good food, and, I mean, like and sell it out. TV t- like they, I think like you can EBT cards and so that you 
I'm sure some yeah. of them can. Yeah, some some, some of them some are all point of sale. Of I'm sure. Cards I don't think the, I don't think the Peters Farm takes anything but cash. So, what? cash Peter's is king. Farm. Cash is king. Hate yeah, to say it. Like, well, we got to keep cash. You know who the Peters yeah. Farm people are. Uh, uh, I'm. From, I'm uh, I would support Billy. Huh? I would support everyone in paying the farmers' markets. Please pay them in cash. I know they may have a credit card option. I would urge you to pay all of these entities in cash. Take yeah. bowling, and I will say no more. I will say nothing more than that. Keep as much cash as possible. Keep it alive. Keep it They're floating. trying to get rid of it. They're trying to get rid of it. Because man, if that happens, we're done. Yep. Yeah. It's game over. The control oh, yeah, is there. It's game right over. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of the farmers' market too, in downtown Rocky Mountain, I mean, let's you know real quick talk about how. That place is thriving here lately. You've got Little Shabby's that's now opened up, which replaced where Twins Creek's distillery was, yep. which has moved down the road. So we didn't lose a business. We gained one. We gained one. And I'm pretty sure, what's what's their catering business in down the, the big famous one? Center Stage. Uh, Center Stage, yes. I think their place is opening up right there. Pretty much when you're coming down Main Street before you make that tight turn at the farmer's market. Yeah, they're doing some huge left, stuff. Uh-huh. Right there, there's a new restaurant that they're going to yeah. be putting there with brunch. That's lunch, crooked, crooked Road there. And the, uh, Rock Mount has I mean, turned to a hot little spot. I like what I'm seeing. Is is the public ready for Amos though? If we have these down, you know, these shows on Thursday and Friday nights, oh, are the they public, ready for everybody that? Everybody in the public knows. Honest Amos. Abe's God. gonna be on. I mean, he's been around for 20 years now. Between the late Crocky Mountain Callaway, everybody and all those congregated areas. This, this seems to be a post Abe late form Amos though. I mean, you know, but I like what I'm seeing in Rocky Mount. I like it. Yeah, and that's what it takes. We gotta have Dakota with DJ service down there. Oh man, jamming on the corner on a night. You won't sleep. Good. <laughs> yeah, right on. <laughs> Party up I've through full weed. I've walked through like Green Hall, Texas. There, that's what that's that's where it's at. It is. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, where it's at. It's a, it's a different different yeah, lifestyle. A local vibe, a different mm-hmm. vibe. That it's a vibe. That's where that and that we're evolving that vibe. And let me tell you, embrace it. Right, because we are all going to be uplifted through Rocky Mount succeeding oh, it, as a it venue. Tightens everything it up. does. Mm. Yeah. You know, if you have 10 local businesses versus one box store, I mean, every damn dime in Walmart goes to Bennyville, Arkansas. That's right. Yeah. That's Nobody a, yeah. profits. Mm-hmm. But, nope. you know, if Dakota's opening some storefronts, I, you know, we're all, all that money is. It's local. Stay in Keep here. it local. Keep it and, and let's talk about what we can do with this show here, especially, you know, with Chip here. I mean, we've had these discussions before, more in private than we have on the show, but, you know, this show has turned more into just a little hobby podcast. We are, at this point in time, a movement. You know, I was telling y'all earlier, we hit 10,000 followers on Instagram this week. Big thanks to Chip on that, because I think we've, I've had that account for three years now and i had about six thousand in three years and i've hit four thousand in about four months with chip helping out like I, he'll collaborate with me on a bunch of posts and stuff so we're at ten thousand over ten thousand on all three major social media accounts now and we have a ton of people that's out unheard there. of yes we have a ton of people out there right now who are following us who are who are buying into the appalachian spirit who are buying into the appalachian you know belief system stuff you know chip sees a lot on his posts and we collaborate and we have different following bases on all three different platforms you know we have a more regional and national following on x Mm -hmm. we're getting people really interested in coming here that are from out of town you know on instagram we've got a different kind of base on on facebook we're getting we're hitting our local people Mm -hmm. but you know we we become more more than just a show now we are a movement now look we're 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 about our you know the reach we make on social media the people we're impacting the, the farms that we're putting out there and and promoting and and the localities you know the small little towns and rocky mountains are going to going to become a hub, I think, because of the people sitting in this room right now. You know, Chip, right now, Donald Trump Jr. has been, like, sharing a ton of your posts and actually tagging you all and and, and keep, I mean, <laughs> I mean. It's not. It's, it's. Is he going to be here in the cabin? This is what I'm I mean, asking. These, 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 are, these are the possibilities we're you. talking about here, like Ted Nugent, you know, Donald Trump Jr., and Gina Sherano, you know. Movie stars, big time reporters, big time hunters, like all these people with massive influence, massive followings that do unique, different things. You know, they're in Chip's inbox all the time. They're in my inbox all the time. Here's who I want to come here. 
they want to come here. <laughs> they want to come he to would the come. cabin. They I swear he would spend the time. So, well, so show up to your local. Oh, oh, the chick Kennedy. Are you talking about RFK? I thought you were talking about RFK. <laughs> oh yeah, Shit, that's that's one of Spike's best buddies. I love her. Yeah. He does too. I love her. <laughs> the chick. It box. is. Yeah, yeah, well, she's the, the most libertarian. MTV. You know, she's, she's, she's on MTV British. first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But she's real. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> I mean, if she don't like you, she just say F you, man. She don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but I mean look. Yeah. I love her. <laughs> look, all these, all these people are, are, are very possible. Yes, we could get Kennedy down here. Like I said, she's tight with Spike. Is that is her name. Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. She's Kennedy. First name's Kennedy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. She's one. I mean, they, 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 these these are all possibilities. Oh. I mean, ima- imagine. <laughs> well, I'd love a bless a squeezer. Look, most, <laughs> of the, most of the podcasts out there are just in random studios and strip malls and business parks. You know, they're, they're on Zoom. Like, imagine hitting somebody up and saying, you come up here to the mountain, you shoot some guns, you look at some goats, you come here to the cabin, it's got historic, you know, historic value. You come to downtown Rocky Mountain, you catch a show at the Harvester, you get some food at the Burks Company. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, these people mm-hmm. have to come up here and they've had a good time and we have references now. Like we, we're putting the pieces together here. We, so we need everybody else to get out there and, and support your local community. Go to these restaurants, you know, make them, make them vibe, you know, make them a happening place, show up and, and, and every opportunity you get because we're bringing these people into town. And, you know, we bring 50 people into town every single year, five of them, five a year and decide, you know what? I want to buy some land up here and put me a spot because these are the people we're talking about bringing here have this kind of money. Five of them, three of them are going to build a brand new house. Who's going the, to put them a roof? The, the, Who's the, going to put them a roof? Dakota. The, re- the real estate. Patrick and Plumber, Isaiah. Or- the, re- <laughs> the real estate story that I've been picking up over the last, I don't know, 10 days or so has been fairly evident that Appalachia is a place where people are relocating to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Getting out of the hell. This yeah, is the better a, living. <laughs> this is a hot spot, and if we don't take advantage of it, we we oh, keep, we're fooling bad. ourselves. We will win. We're going to be taking advantage of it. You know, the people in this room. Well, I'm just saying that they, there's a reason that this region is a hot spot. Yep. Absolutely, because there's good people, hardworking people. Exactly. Yes. 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 And as Strategic time goes on, yes. Skelton, <laughs> you do research and you find out how many people out of the government, Secret Service, CIA, Army, you research how many of them is in this tight area. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because 80% of the country lives west of or east of the Mississippi River anyway. And then when you take all the city people, most of your based individuals who well, are smart enough to grow, who are smart enough to fight, they, don't want to live in the cities. They want to live in the country. It's actually, and Appalachia makes up most of the rural area in the east. We're right kind of at the beginning of it. But here into West Virginia and parts of Kentucky is the most nuclear secure place to be if something were to happen. Well, yeah, because uh, White, White Silver Springs, yeah. the homestead, yeah. it's, a, it's a nuclear bunker for politicians. Too. So is Greenbrier. The yeah, way- oh, the Greenbrier, that's what I'm thinking of. I'm <laughs> sorry. The way the jet the Greenbrier. Stream. So the jet stream, yeah. come, no matter how mm-hmm. deep south it curves, it always, the uh, Appalachian Mountain pushes it back north. So no matter where a nuclear bomb was detonated out yeah. west or anything, the jet stream would naturally carry yeah, around us. everything off the west side yeah. of Earth. I, I, you don't have no idea how many... Then people I built houses for. Yeah. And I'm asking why. As I, would, they, they, as it would. Way, it, it was way too many of them people coming in here and building houses. Mm-hmm. Why? <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. That's why. They can, see, know, they can I, see the future. I, I was head of forward detail for the Secret Service for X amount of years. Why are you building houses? Eventually, you figure it out. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, they say. This, this is the place. State, by data, this is the most protected area. Mm-hmm. Because the proximity to D.C., the government's going to hold that at all costs. But even the way the jet stream pulls up the mountains, anything bad to D.C. is still pulled up. Not to mention the resources we got here. Not to mention, like, in Appalachia, in in one man's front yard, you can grow everything you need to sustain yourself (laughs) for an entire year. You can grow every medication. You can grow every fruit, every vegetable. If you've got an acre and a half of land and access to water, you know, you you can have fish, wildlife, you can have medications and you can have fruits and vegetables year round almost anywhere in this region. That's like, not contaminated. Yes. We are, we are self sufficient. <laughs> all of yep. that is the reason that Appalachian people have the grit of the FU. 
<laughs> that that mm-hmm. that you know because we don't care. Mm-hmm. We'll make it. We know that. We're I mean, survivors. We We've that. always been survivors. You know, it goes back to the Scots Irish. And stay out of our way. <laughs> and, 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 and that, that's what creates the grit in a kid. Young adult. No. Uh, <laughs> say it's Joking. 18 years old. I'm, I'm going to have my own house. I'm going to start my. You know, that, that's what gives you that grit. Well, that's what I like about Dakota because I see a lot of. Don't you pin that on Ricky Bobby. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, mean, I remember this son of a gun at his age. I remember him at his age. I remember it. I remember it. He's out there running and gunning. Yeah, but I can't make a, but, but an Abraham you, Lincoln you, costume look as good as you. You're, you're much more reserved, I believe, than Amos was at that age. He was born for the costume. He was. He really was. That was a beautiful thing. Dude, I, I got a Ben Franklin costume for a Pirate Days, and I didn't get to wear it because it rained. Well, you should come to D.C. with us in February. We always talk about Oh, it. yeah. Because yeah. That's what I'm saying. Was, you can be there with Abe. Again, and Dude, I got the tights and everything. invited back next year as speakers. So you're we're gonna be speakers. Me. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna be comped. I'm hoping rooms and 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 tables and stuff. Oh, Sounds like a party. Shows, like, oh. now, you want to talk? You want to talk <laughs> oh, about? Shit. Don't don't the, get the into that. of a party. <laughs> don't get into that. Hold on, Dakota. Did you hit? Did... No, let's carry on. <laughs> As I can see, the goblet up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. oh man. Jeez. No, it's gonna get a, a display position. Oh. Trust me, it's oh, only Lord. reserving Does itself that... there. We really, we want, we got, to, I want to take you. Well, Ben Franklin, he's got I'm come. down. We got Ben Franklin. <laughs> With the, 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 oh, yes. <laughs> oh, no. And that was the craziest thing. Like, like we were honestly at, at this is a students we're for Liberty. Me in there. Look, this, this is a student. <laughs> th- th- what'd you say? We, no, what? I mean, not for real, but. <laughs> no, look. Oh, real. Oh, I like, understand. got you. Look, this yeah. was the Students for Liberty conference, <laughs> and we th- this was the first time we had ever ventured out into anything. This is the first. We're a podcast. We'd never been to a podcast conference. We'd never been to an Appalachian conference. We go to a Students for Liberty conference. It's oh, by the way, nothing it's but international. Inter- nothing but house, nothing but price, international so. students from all over the freaking world. This isn't oh. American. You know, this isn't Appalachian. This is Americans. international. Yeah. And we were basically, how many, you know, how many countries are like a lot. Like most I, I think 80 were, 80, 80 or yeah. 100 80 were represented. Or something was represented mm. there with delegations. And, 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 and let's, pretend, <laughs> let's pretend that this conference was like, you know, they're like the Baltimore Orioles. You know, it's a professional conference. It ain't, oh. you know, it ain't the Republican oh. National Convention, you know, like the Yankees, but it's, it's respectable. There's a lot of huge names there. There's a lot of film directors. Every guy there's big, in a suit and tie. And we are literally, we're, we're like, we're like the guy who's like, man, we've had seven starters get hurt this week. We got to pull this guy up <laughs> from rookie league in the single A's. We're going to bring him up. He's going to bat eight. And and we're just gonna hope he gets on base one time and doesn't completely screw it up. That's who oh, we were. Man. That's who we were in our little corner up here. <laughs> and somehow, going up there batting eighth, we end up going like three for three with two homers, a triple, four RBIs. We get invited back to the next year to speak and have our own table. You know, be comped everything because Abraham Lincoln and General Cornwallis over here. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> in D.C. talking to him. Like, we're on the side of the we street. We murdered him. We're on the side of the street. There's guys getting ready to break up with their girlfriends to stay out here and hang out. She's like, Nathan, get back in here right now. Let's get to our room. He's like. It was uncomfortable. She's like, she's like he's like. It's hey, Abraham Lincoln. Babe. He's like, I'm hanging out with Abe Lincoln. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, they they were a hit. So next year, I mean, you, 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 you've got to jump on that. I mean, we have, like, the, the ability that these people have. Like, I, I can't. <laughs> and hopefully next year we'll have cameras with us when we go. The we're visions I have. We're going to oh. document the entire trip. We're so going to have a producer I'm go with nightmares us. tonight. We're going to have oh, chip. We're going to oh, have Matt. Right. We're going to, I mean. It's fun. But, but there was delicate. I mean, they didn't even speak English. No, they just wanted a picture with Abe. And, and, like, they would stop me. Like, I wanted a picture with Abe. headed up to the bar to get another one of them uh, yeah, another one of those. Uh, <laughs> and Chip said something like, oh, my God, dude. And literally at least five times from the one ballroom to a bar, I had to stop, hand my drink out to Chip, and take t- – like, they would just be like, whoa, whoa. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, and P- like, it was unbelievable to me. That wasn't the worst of it. The worst was on the street. We went out there to smoke – you went to smoke a cigarette, and I was just hanging out with you. But – you know, no, they would Abe smoked. They would no. They would come up. They have oh my God, it's Abe Lincoln. Can you take a selfie? Every time. Abe with a vape. Every time. <laughs> and there, I mean, there was there was people that absolutely <laughs> had no idea who Abraham Lincoln was. 
like me and Chip walked up to the within yards, within yards of his. I mean, this guy looked like <laughs> his knees, like you're Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Had no idea, but knew that Abraham Lincoln was somebody by in, sight, in, in, by sight, mm -hmm. and like literally was down his. And I'm like. No, that killed him like a <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dakota, right let's be honest here. I mean, you, you've hung out with us right a couple of times. You know, you... And he was like, oh, what now? Look, I had people want me to take me to Ford Theater and take pictures. <laughs> no, the, it was the, a block the, away. The it was a block away. Right but the there. best yeah. is we got invited to go to the Students of Liberty Conference in Europe. With, and I don't know if you know geography, but they were doing it in Georgia, uh -huh. which is like a country that's like Russia slash... Very close it's to Russia. Staying. Certainly it's Russia staying. adjacent. It's like Russia slash Afghanistan. You know, it's somewhere in that region. I mean, can you imagine us slack-jawed, yokel, oh, they got a good redneck, mouth-breathing hillbillies <laughs> going to Georgia in the Students for Liberty Conference? It's Georgia with a J. I mean, I had, I had an Afghanistan. Remember, does anybody remember the Afghanistan woman who sat down beside me and tried oh. to go toe-to-toe? -to -toe? Wow. Oh, she <laughs> was. Yeah, well, oh, we did leave. Didn't uh, I, 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 I sat there for a little bit. We did. And then decided to run. Oh, dude, she was she was she was she trying was, to eat my lunch. She was. I mean, she, did you know, we record any of that? Did you think a no, libertarian? Oh, we didn't record any of that. Did you think a libertarian could could exist in Afghanistan? And I was like, yeah, there's tons of people up there in the mountains that have no affiliation to the Taliban or any other. You she know, was a clone. They, she was they, a clone. They take care of themselves. Oh, they govern themselves. They hunt for themselves. Cool, right. I was like, fun. yeah, a libertarian can exist there. And and then she, and then, oh my god, she goes off on a bunch of shit. I, I mean, I was like, <laughs> I, I just want to look at her and be like, lady, look. I appreciate you wanting to have this dialogue right now, but I'm about seven crown and cokes deep. <laughs> and uh, no better time to have a conversation. Yeah, and, and well, uh, the the one do, the one boy from the your conference or whatever that was inviting us over, he was like, dude, he was like, I've been up here for whatever seven days to this conference. He was like, I'm, I, I've never seen. <laughs> A conference this live. It was energy. It's time a big bopping through there like we owned a place. <laughs> and they did. So Poor out of our league. It was ridiculous. <laughs> was great. I'm telling you, though, they would, they would have killed it. They changed the whole. I mean, we got the film director from Australia that got locked up over the COVID mess to do a podcast with us. Him and Simon got pissed drunk. And like we did on this, it was beautiful, dude. I love the guy. Oh, dude, I'm telling you once, once again, if this is the first time you ever listened to the show and you haven't went back and found it, go to our website, podcast.org or whatever app you listen to. Go back and and search for Topher, Topher Field. Field. Topher Field. Dude, it is man. one of the best shows you will ever listen to. You got an Australian and a Brit going toe to toe yeah. with alcohol, and neither one of them wanted to give up. Yeah, and and I still honestly, want and and Chip and I went up to a Libertarian party national convention which was even bigger and i gotta say if y'all two would have been up there for that oh god you would have absolutely killed like we, we've got to hit up at least two or three conferences a year yeah. bring the code to one or two of them we just plan. i mean like like it, it's it's unbelievable to think Shouldn't what y'all could accomplish 100 oh yeah it well, will be documented well we need we do what well, we're lacking we need ben franklin though too y'all need, need one of those like insta 360 cameras they're they carry well, we got we got Matt too that can come to some of these conferences oh, yeah. in DC. Like, uh, I'm, I'm telling y'all, like, like these two right here will sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white glove. Am Amos has got some OnlyFans experience. I'm sure he could help you guys out. Oh, we got to hear about that. What? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Only toes. I forgot it. I get those mixed up all the time. Oh man, you have like a German Baptist feet page. What do you got? <laughs> Look, I think the whole the whole idea behind all this though is <laughs> Appalachia. Look, Appalachia is becoming money. a cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> See, put them dogs up. <laughs> Do you hear me? Oh, oh, look, feet. cage them things. <laughs> look, Appalachia is becoming a, a cool feet. thing. It's becoming something that's that's necessary. It's becoming something that's that's, that's counterculture. The homesteading, the the personalities. We can do this. Yes, we can. <laughs> can you imagine all the users typing up OnlyFans trying to find Amos out there right now? <laughs> German Baptist feet. Feet. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag toenails. So, uh, a friend of mine is a foot person. Uh-oh. And I ain't never knows. They're not. They're not in the room, are they? I got him. No, right. Okay. Right Ooh, this? He rolls up to the house one night at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> 
and I'm standing out there talking to a couple of people in the car, and he's hanging out the window taking pictures. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, don't move. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Callie had just painted my toenails like a couple of days before. And the next morning, I wake up and I <laughs> hit Facebook and scroll down. There go, there's a post. Some late night Greek fee for your viewing play. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, God. So I suddenly showed it to my eight year old daughter, and she was like, You tell him to erase that because I don't like my artwork. On that. <laughs> uh, Great response. <laughs> oh, Unless it's going to be monetized. That's right. Well, I'm telling you, man, we have a uh, ball, and 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 like I said, every, everything, yeah. <laughs> everything you're hearing, everything you're listening, we, I think we're on the rise. So we, we need everybody out there to to get out there and support your friends, support your community. Get you know, get out there and go to the farmers market. Follow us. Go to patreoncom slash get on tap and become a subscriber for only a dime a day minimum. Like you're helping fund these trips to DC, and we're we're going there, and these people are looking at us, and they're turning around, and they're coming back here, and they're spending money, so they're going to spend money places that you visit and maybe places that sponsor your children's football team or baseball team like maybe you don't have a business but the people we're bringing here are gonna reinvest in our communities so we need everybody out there just like this is cool you know what i mean like you come up here dakota this is a good time right you oh it's up, a great time i mean you come up here to the cabin you hang out you have a conversation. It I, might I take me a day is, or two to get up here, I but I'll make it. This is missing. <laughs> this is missing in America. This is missing in, in our culture. People just to be able to sit down and have conversations. You don't necessarily agree about everything, but you can at least have a conversation and have fun with. Like we've never brought a part. We brought people in here that have completely different ideological beliefs than us, and we have a great time with it. And it happens all the time. You know, we're we're on the cusp of something great here. You know, what I mean, it, it it in the moment. In the moment, you you kind of ignore it, you know, because in the moment, we're all going to go back to our houses tonight and we're going to, you know, do our thing and we're, we're going to, you know, give our kids baths and we're going to, you know, make our, you know, whatever, the, whatever we're going to do. So ten, not to 10, be 10 years down the road, excuse. 15 years down the road, you know, people and us are going to look back on moments like this and say, man, this, these were the times that they were building something incredible. I, mean, I wish I could have been there. I wish I could have been up there at the cabin for that show. I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that show of where we're going to be at in five years, where we're going to be at in 10 years. <laughs> we're going to be massive. People are going to think, man, God, you know, like you look, think back on the Grateful Dead. God, I wish I was in there listening to them. Please. Just, just. Uh, <laughs> I'm <serious>. yes. <laughs> Look at that. Billy. Tell me. Uh, Billy. Not. I can't hold it. <laughs> man, that was some good shit. <laughs> I was having PTSD from the Baptist preachers for a minute. Oh, she got both hands on it. Help! <laughs> I'm confused. What in the world is going on? Uh-oh. I bet they do. Take some, Take some pictures now. Take pictures now. Is that what it is? Get is it getting deep? Out. Is that what it is? No, she <laughs> Or now I lost my train of thought. I mean, I thought I was on kind of a roll right there. <laughs> you were. Man. And I'm sitting next to him. We're, we're, dri- we're driving up. It engorged Simon. <laughs> yeah. Lord. Well, I'm better. <laughs> Carry on. Carry on. Did I, oh, did, did I get the accent down pretty good? Got it. Carry on. Got it. Got it. Carry on. Look, I'm just saying, look, put things into perspective. Here we are, like, this is show 160, 170 something. We're moving in on 200 shows. It started out as a hobby, you know, upstairs in my house with a couple of buddies. And now it's grown into a movement. You know, we've had NASCAR champions and hall of famers on here we've had grammy award winning artists cma nominated artists we've had the guy who finished third in the vice presidential election and we've had the most recent vice presidential election unfortunately for the libertarian party that's not one i look back on with with a lot of happiness now but we had him here no less and had baseball stars yes we've had baseball stars we've had nfl stars we've had authors we've had moonshiners we've had musicians you know and everybody we've had on here is people we've just asked kindly. Imagine what we're going to be able to do when we have cameras sitting in here and we have people coming up here and with the ability to stay two or three nights in the Morris Hotel and hang out for a weekend. <laughs> we offer them those packages. You know, when they're up here in the, in the Big Lick Roofing Studios and the Appalachian Podcast brought to you by Rife Technology and we have five, you know, five other people really built into this thing. You know what I mean? Like, we have an, an, an amazing opportunity here. Like, I want people to buy into this. I want people to understand, you know, what we can do, what we can change up here. So, you know, take it very seriously and, 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 and follow us and make sure you're hanging out and keeping in touch. 
because we're going to do a lot of fun things up here. We're going to have a lot of fun people. And I'm hoping whenever we do get the cameras up in here and we get things rolling, we're going to have a massive first show. Crawford and Power playing the 151st Fest downtown Rocky Mount, by the mm -hmm. way. So make your plans for that. I'll probably be having a kid that weekend, so <laughs> I can't be there. <laughs> September, September, September 21st, 21st, I believe, the 151 Fest. You know, but and that's awesome. But we want to have awesome. a Rocky huge, wanna, cool. yes, yes, that that's awesome. big we for love the it. area. You know, we want to have a big event up here when we finally do switch over to video for the first show. I mean, hopefully we're going to get Spike up here for that one. We're going to get Matthew Reif, you know, hopefully get Dakota up here. We'll get Henry, Henry Law. We'll get Crawford and Power. Hopefully we'll get Chris to fly in from Mexico. I mean, it's going to be a big deal. So, you know, go subscribe and at patreon.com slash get on tap, by the way. So go subscribe because some of the subscribers are going to get opportunity to come up here and hang out for that event. So, I mean, what we're doing is we're having a lot of fun, but we're moving mountains at the same time. You know I mean? I, you know, I, I, Look where we were at a year ago. We had Spike up here on the mountain with Henry and Chip. I didn't know any of them. And now we've got Spike getting you freaking slack-jawed yokels, speaking engagements at a national conference. And Chip has got some of the biggest names, you know, and, 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 and social media wanting to come down here and get on the show. I mean, just, and all we did was send an invite. Like I said, imagine how, what we can do. How can't we, we win? Imagine what we can do right. when we have some force behind us. 100%. When we got a budget. We have it'd, people, you know, a team. It'd be a different game. Yeah. And we're having fun now. Imagine what we're going to do later. So, look, I'm oh, just saying. More fun. Oh, my God. It's going to be it's going to be epic. Like, the people are going to, I mean. I don't like that word. I get epic. It, like, anyway, so. That's like, like the new word you hear, like, from the younger people. It's like. Yeah, too. Yeah. Epic is something that should happen only once in your life. Yeah. yeah. By yeah. definition. Well, I think times. this is a pretty one. So, you're limiting yourself kind of is what you're telling me. You're limited. No, that is, you use that word for something that is that. That, so if that you use that me. word every week, your expectations are super motherfucking low. I don't. I think this show is epic, though, considering the people we've had up there. I mean, think about it. No, it's good. You sit, it's there, you sit there and have a conversation with Spike. I mean, imagine that. Imagine Spike, an intellectual. The vocabulary's changing, an okay? An intellectual. New meaning. Who has, like has, meaning. has went through the gauntlet, <laughs> through the political <laughs> process, sitting down but, here with this freaking high school dropout and having an intellectual conversation. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Bullets are fired. Shots fired. Bullets In a good way. Everybody knows I don't like school. Y'all hear his next snap? You hear his next snap? Coming. Damn. But you dropped out. I convinced him that I had a better idea than going to school. Whatever you want to call it, you kicked it to the That's a good point. He's a small fucking move. He hopped out. They was like, that guy's going to be a lawyer one day. Close. I could see that. He's Billy, Abe Lincoln. Billy, if you don't if you don't shut this show down now, I'm going to kill you. Why? <laughs> My third grade. Because I may be, I may, was I may be years old when we were fighting each other. I said that ain't right. She said, "What do you mean that ain't right?" I said, "Abraham Lincoln's address said four score and seven years ago. That's eighty seven years. It weren't a hundred years old." She called my parents. Said I was being disruptive. Yeah, that happened to me a bunch of times. That sounds cool, about too. right. But I was right. Yeah, you're right. I was right too, but yeah. They'll but now I'm having that conversation with my daughter. You might be right, but mm -hmm. there's a way to handle it. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's no good no, way to handle it. It doesn't involve Speak a throw right. punch. <laughs> Should. <laughs> no, you just don't have to gloat it. Yeah, but when you're ten years In old, but when you're ten years old or eight and years old, and you outsmart the dumbass standing in the front of the class, you're gonna gloat. <laughs> Hence the reason that the. <laughs> Daughter asked the principal at uh, elementary school if it was common practice now for pe people to be able to wear sleeveless shirts. And she's like, well, no. She's like, well, I noticed Miss such and such was wearing a sleeveless Oof. top today. Oof. Yeah, she <laughs> was like, great. Oof. Smart kid. Oh, I had mine today since they told me that I was ignoring her driving down the road. So and, you could talk with and, well, my wife was having a conversation with me in the kitchen, and I didn't even think our daughter could hear her. She was in the other room coloring, and she was like, Claire told me today that you ignored her driving down the road yesterday at a Roanoke. And I'm like, I don't remember nothing about that. And I hear it from the other room, yes, you did, Daddy. You ignored me. It Ooh. hurt my feelings. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I was Claire, like, Claire is a smart like, you were looking, She's you, a spark so You were looking at your phone and ignored me, and I don't like it. It's like, baby, I don't. I, was, I don't remember looking at my. I, but, you know. That sounds too familiar. That's beautiful. Sounds too familiar. Simon. 
Why did you make your last comment? Which one? You said you got to shut this show down right now. I thought we were on a roll. I I thought we were talking about how beautiful Appalachia was and why things like what we're doing right now should be encouraged. Get around your buddies. Get around your friends. Have these conversations. Talk. Hang out. Start things like this. Make it so. You think so? I think that's a good place to probably end it then. (laughs) So... I guess everybody out there, Dakota, appreciate the hell out of it. Hopefully, we'll see you here again. Really I'll always there. enjoy being on. Like we we enjoy we enjoy you jumping in on here because we're we're you know. Uh, Hopefully, the listeners get something out of it too. Education's everything. Absolutely, yeah, I definitely did. For yeah, sure. I mean, you learn a few things here and there, and you get to relate to some people that are zero out convincing. Here. It's all facts. It's all about networking. You know, you're relating to us. We're relating to other people, and we're making things happen. But think about how many people may listen to that and second guess. What they're getting ready to make a decision on on their house. Yep. Yeah. You know, they might think me and Dakota both are just dumber and shit. That's fine. That's but cool. They, they <laughs> Don't call me when you well, need help. You I'm just kidding. <laughs> Please call. <laughs> Please call. <laughs> I mean, but you can't even forget what, you know, you have to take that into account. Go get those home inspections on those new homes. That's right. Like, they'll be afraid to use your insurance company. Yes. Oh, right. sorry, sorry, call Big Lick Roof and we got you covered. All right, so one more time. Where can they find you at on social media? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, BigLickRoofing.com, TikTok, not OnlyFans. That's Amos. Yeah. But you can find Amos on OnlyFans, Abe Lincoln 69. Abe Lincoln's You know what? Feet. Honestly, we didn't make Amos an OnlyFans, <laughs> but instead of him doing what people traditionally think about, is him just giving them advice on how to fix stuff around their house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's, hear, let's hear what he has to say about footers. I'd pay a dollar for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think about this crack right here in my foundation? Can I last for another five years on it? You know? <laughs> yeah, it's just an image of his feet while he gives advice. That's it. <laughs> and Chip, where can they find you at? Being a Libertarian on uh, Instagram, uh, X, we are uh, BN Libertarian, and on Facebook, Being Libertarian Media, this past two weeks have been just a phenomenal time to be memeing, and it's, it's yeah, full bore right now. Yeah, you're back to half a million on between, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, y'all, y'all are way, 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 way up there right now, so it's, it's fun watching everything go on and watch y'all grow exponentially. Real time. We've been growing exponentially, like I said. We've been to 10,000 Club on all three. You can find us at, at the Appalachian Podcast on Facebook, on Instagram. And at get on tap on X. Hopefully we might I might end up getting a TikTok here soon. I don't know. That's where we can make everything work. But uh, patreon.com slash get on tap one more time. That's where you can become a subscriber. Only a dime a day. Three dollars a month minimum. You can give more. You get these shows early. You'll get uh subscriber only content. So for everybody else that's not in the room anymore and ditched out on me, it's only <laughs> me and Chip left. Thank you, Chip. We'll talk to you next time. Enjoyed it, guys.
got hold of this bottle Got nowhere to live Hate this life that I'm living Don't know how much more I can give Now I'm leaving my home Across the fields I do roam I got nowhere to go I'm headed down to Mexico Oh, 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 oh